All right, this next sequence of lessons is focused on setting up your Ruby working environment on a Mac OS computer. And we'll begin by getting access to the terminal, which is sometimes called the command prompt or the command line. Now the terminal looks something like this. I'm going to open it from my dock. Don't worry, I'll show you how to actually access the program in just a minute. But the terminal looks something like this. It's basically a flashing cursor, a flashing prompt sometimes. And all you do here is give commands to the computer, textual commands, basically just writing out statements and then pressing enter to execute. Long before we had graphical interfaces like the ones we have now, this is how programmers interacted with the computer. They just simply gave it commands to do things like create files, navigate into folders, delete folders, everything that you can do within a typical Mac Finder window you can do in the terminal. It's just a command based rather than click based, all right? It's less visual. We'll be using the terminal occasionally throughout the course in order to execute our Ruby file. Sometimes we'll be able to do them within our text editor, which is called Atom. We'll set that up in a few lessons, but many times we'll have to run our Ruby files from the terminal. So in this lesson, what I want to do is make sure you can access the terminal on your machine and just show you a few very common commands if you're unfamiliar with how to use this tool. So let me exit out of my current terminal and let's begin. The easiest way that you can access the terminal application on your computer is with Spotlight Search. You can do that by holding the command key and pressing spacebar. You're gonna get this prompt. At that point, you can type in terminal, and when you press enter, you should see a new terminal window open. Please note that your default settings are probably going to be different than mine. Your terminal will probably be a black text on a white background. It should look something closer to this. Let me just find my basic one. Probably something closer to this when you open. This is just the color scheme, so no, there's uh, the only differences here are aesthetic. There are no actual differences in the commands. If you want to have a different color scheme, what you can do is simply click this shell command at the very top, and then say new window, and all of these options, you may have more or less, are basically different visual looks for your terminal. You can select whatever you'd like. I'm just gonna stick with this white text on blue background, but otherwise the commands are going to be the same. And that's how you access your terminal the easy way. However, what we really want to do is make it even simpler to always have access to our terminal so we don't have to keep typing into Spotlight Search. So what we can do to, to kind of add it to our dock is to open our Finder, then navigate to your Applications directory. And at the very bottom of your Applications directory, you should find a folder called Utilities. And in the Utilities folder, the terminal will be listed very close to the bottom. And what I recommend is taking this application and dragging it to the dock, much like I have mine right here. Simply drag it and lock it into place so you always have access to it. And thus, whenever you need to use it, it's just a simple matter of clicking on it, and then you'll get launched into a brand new terminal window. Now let's dive into some very common terminal commands that you'll be using when you're navigating and using this tool throughout the course, okay? So as I mentioned, everything here is a simplified command you give to the computer. This operates very similar to a finder window because the terminal is navigating across your computer's directory structure. So the first command I wanna show you is PWD. PWD is an acronym for Print Working Directory, and it's going to tell you what current directory you're in, wherever you are in the computer's file structure. And if I execute this, by default, you're going to be in your user directory of the user that's currently logged into the computer. You're simply going to be in that directory. And of course, if you're in a different directory and you type PWD, it's just going to tell you that directory. This is no different than the finder when you're navigating through folders and then going into other folders or other directories. This is basically telling you where you are currently, okay? Now, in order to see all of the files and directories that are in the current or present folder, you can use the command ls. ls means list, and it lists all of the available folders and directories that, you're, that are available in the current folder. So everything that I see here, all of these names right here, are uh, folders and um, applications or files that are in my user slash Boris P directory. Keep in mind, of course, your username is going to be different, so this, isn't, this part is not going to be the same for you, but otherwise you should be following the generally the same structure. You should currently be in the directory, uh, in your central users directory, whenever a brand new terminal window opens for you, okay? Now, in order to navigate into any single one of the directories that you see listed in LS, you use the CD command. CD is short for change directory, and of course, in order to change a directory, we have to tell the terminal what directory we want to go into. So if I look at my list here, I can see I have a desktop directory here. If I just type in desktop, you can see it appear right here. 
CD desktop is going to navigate into that directory. When I execute this, we'll see desktop appear right here on the left, but you can always use a command like pwd or print working directory to verify and check uh, that you're in the proper directory. Now I could just type pwd like I did a few lines ago, but uh, there's another cool trick that I want to uh, show you at this point that may even reduce your typing, especially when it comes to executing longer commands. Every command that you input into the terminal is actually saved in memory, and you can access it using the up and down arrow keys on your keyboard. So if I want to go back a couple of commands, I can simply navigate through them using my up arrow key. So there's my last command, there's the second to last command, and finally here's pwd, which I just executed uh, a couple of commands ago. And if I execute this now, you'll see we're now in the desktop directory on my computer. So we began at this user slash Boris P directory, and then we use cd to go one level down into desktop, okay? Pretty simple, hopefully. I know the commands themselves may take a little bit of time to get used to as far as memorizing them, but really this is the exact same thing you do in Finder, it's just doing it uh, verbally instead of visually, okay? Now what I recommend for this course is creating a central Ruby folder on your desktop to store all of your files. Uh, for this course. You don't have to create it on the desktop if you don't want to. You can pick whatever directory you'd like, but I'd recommend storing everything that we're going through within a central directory. I'm going to do it here on my desktop. I can do that with a command called mkdir. mkdir is short for make directory, basically create a new empty directory. After a space, much like with the cd command, I can give it the name, and this is going to be the name of my directory. Let's call my directory Ruby. So I'm just gonna type mkdir Ruby, and when I execute this, we can actually see Ruby appears right here on the right on my desktop. So as I mentioned, everything that you can do in Finder, you can do in the terminal. So you can either create a folder visually by simply right-clicking here, or rather control-clicking and selecting new folder, or we can execute the command mkdir followed by the folder name and get the same result. Now let's go ahead and navigate into my Ruby folder. Again, I navigate with the CD key, followed by the name of the folder that I want to navigate into. Now let's execute the pwd command again to see where we're currently in. And we can see we're now in users Boris P desktop Ruby. Now this course is bundled with a lot of different lessons. So my recommendation for you is to create a brand new directory for every section of the course and a brand new Ruby file uh, for every lesson of the course. Now you don't have to follow this design, this is just my recommendation. However you want to structure things on your end is totally up to you. If you want to have a separate Ruby file for every lesson, that's fine. If you want to have one Ruby file throughout the entire course and simply override it each lesson with whatever we're currently going through, that's totally fine as well. I think it's best to preserve all your work, but how you structure it, how you name your files is totally up to you. The only one piece of advice that I give that's going to prevent a lot of errors is whenever you're naming your files, and your Ruby files, by the way, will have an extension of .rb, the only thing I recommend is to not have any spaces within your file names. So if I'm creating something like a Ruby file, and let's say its name is floating point numbers, I would just recommend writing something like floating underscore point underscore numbers. So instead of having spaces, just replace them with something like underscores or dashes, basically anything to avoid spaces. Programmers generally despise spaces because they're uh, likely to run into issues. Other than that, as long as you're creating a separate .rb file, uh, uh, basically, and storing it in that proper extension, everything should work. The file name itself is largely irrelevant. Uh, so you can follow along with my file names throughout the course or just come up with your own. It's totally up to you. And by the way, if all of these commands are quite a bit to take in the first time, don't worry. We're going to go through the entire process of how we navigate through the terminal, how we find our Ruby files, and how we launch them or execute them from the terminal plenty of times throughout the course. So don't worry. Hopefully the big picture overview, that's the most important thing to understand. So really the key takeaways in this lesson is accessing your terminal, adding it to the doc. I do recommend playing around with the commands with which we explored in this lesson. They are pwd which prints the current directory that you're in, print working directory. We also have ls, which is short for list, that lists all of the current directories and files in the folder that you are now in. We have cd, which is change directory. You follow it up with a space and the name of the directory that you want to go into. And finally, mkdir is uh, not one that we're going to be using a lot, but that's something, that's, that's something you can use in the terminal to create a brand new folder or directory within the current folder that you're in. Simply write mkdir with a space and then follow it up with the name of the folder that you'd like to create. All Ruby files will have the extension .rb in this course, so make sure you have that extension properly written. 
Make sure you avoid spaces in, within your Ruby file names. You can uh, use underscores or dashes, and you can structure them in whichever way you'd like. You can have them all in the central Ruby folder. You can have them within subfolders. It's really up to you. As long as you're good all here on the terminal, then we are all set. We'll be using the terminal in the next lesson to actually install RVM, which is our Ruby version manager, and then we'll be using that to actually install Ruby on our computer. So I hope you're having a lot of fun. I'll see you in the next lesson where we will go ahead and put Ruby on our computer.